Hello, it is Thor's day. The day of Thor. Thunder man of something. Right. Credit a composition of public debt of Spain and Italy. The grey are residents, or at least Spanish types, or Italian types that own the debt. Um, in Italy, they're famed for quite a lot of Italians owning the Italian debt. But what it's showing here is that the red is falling off. Non-residents, in other words, other non-Spanish, non-Italian people, are deciding, I don't think I want Spanish and Italian debt anymore. Sovereign debt, this is. And so aren't buying it. So who is buying it? That little blue sliver is the ECB SMP, which is the ECB buying of um, government uh, debt, state debt and resident which is banks basically who are buying up the state debt and you can see it's mainly been taken up by the grey which is banks buying the sovereign debt of Spain and Italy in this case but there are many examples in Europe right now this is from INET and I've forgotten his name which is a bit naughty because he's I, the blog that I, w I, I recommend following more than anybody. Let's, I'll get him. Because um, I shouldn't really not remember his name. Uh, Perry Merling. Mentioned him before, Perry Merling. He's got funny hair and he writes in a, in a different way, an interesting way. But he kind of uses shorthand terms but he knows what he means and kind of expects you to know what he means because he so often explains them. So when it sounds a bit funny, it's because he expects you to know what he's talking about. He is um, a university lecturer as well. So historically, banks have stepped in to help sovereigns in their time of need. Banks have stepped in to help sovereigns in their time of need, such as the stresses of war finance by expanding their own balance sheets, offering bank liabilities, money, in exchange for sovereign debt that has no alternative ready market. Right, got that? In times of war, um, the banking system will help the sovereign wherever it can, and other extreme circumstances. Contrawise, sovereigns have stepped in to help banks in their time of need offering central bank, that's government, liabilities, reserve money, in exchange for bank debt to allay periodic liquidity crises, and sometimes going so far as to offer sovereign treasury liabilities in exchange for bank equity issue that has no alternative ready market. So it's a bit funny the way it's written, but it's very precise actually. The problem Europe now faces is that monetary union, a fait accompli, left in place the historical symbiosis between national banking systems and national sovereignties, as well as the pattern for thinking formed by generations of experience with that symbiosis. As a consequence, when the crisis hit, National banking systems stepped in to help their national sovereigns and national sovereigns stepped in to help their national banking systems. Sometimes the sovereign wasn't doing too badly, as in the case, say, of Ireland, the banking system was shot. So when one came in behind the other, they were both shot. In Spain, the banking system shot, uh, like Ireland. Um, it's different ways it's playing but they feel obliged to do it because that's the way it's always been done and then he goes on in the rest of this blog article to say for safety's sake in future this will all have to be undone and they'll have to get this memory out of their system and we'll have a banking system that's separate and a sovereign system that's separate but Unfortunately, we won't get there without the whole thing blowing up because the sovereigns have got themselves in a terrible state, um, almost w worse than war finance, quite a, a lot of them, um, expecting the banks to save them. And the banks are in such a shocking state in Europe, expecting the sovereigns to come in to help them, but not understanding that when all the banks go wrong, 
the sovereigns aren't in a fit state to help them what can be done um, the blind cannot lead the blind and the whole thing has to blow up uh, somehow debts will not be paid and debts that will not be paid won't be paid and there will have to be restructuring to say the very least of debt european banks have basically been vying against each other to be the super champion uh, trying to outdo america trying to outdo london uh, you've had the germans trying to do it you've had um Belgian banking systems huge compared to the country the Dutch banking systems big the French banking systems big they've all tried to big big themselves up um, and the governments have thought this is good like having a big airline uh, thought this was really good but airlines can just go bankrupt banks when they go bankrupt cause a great big problem now we've got huge great problem in the euro area with sovereigns not nearly 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 capable of coming in behind what is a hugely rotten banking system enough of that uh, eu economy in the financial times link number three bailout fund should buy euro debt uh, a top european central bank policy maker has publicly backed the rapid use of the eurozone's bailout fund to buy stressed sovereign bonds on the open market saying such an action could ease the very severe strain being felt by spain and italy and so many more the important thing to notice about this is a top european central bank policy maker ecb man core or something his name is says that the EFSF and ESM should get in there and buy the sovereign debt on the secondary market the important thing to note there is the ECB is saying some other buggers should do it because we are not doing it and they are recommending that the ESM does it and there is no way that the ESM has got the firepower to get out there and buy enough sovereign bonds to make a big difference so that's why they're talking about giving the ESM a banking license, something I touched on a long time ago. And as I said then, the problem is there. They will have to explain to the world what a banking license entails and why that is so marvellous. And I think they will not be wanting to do that. Right, United States of America, United States real personal income year over year growth. This is from ECRI those prediction type people you can see basically it goes back to 1952 lots of ups and downs but the trend is downwards you can vaguely see across the draw a line across the middle of those the trend is downwards on real personal incomes the great big downward um, plunge in 08 and 09 there in US personal incomes came back up because that was easy to beat these are year over year growth so it was easy to beat it so it came up to 4% year on year growth over what it was in the great plunge but now it's struggling to beat that beat and it's down to below um, the norm line and heading down towards zero again what they're saying is the personal income isn't rising nearly enough in the United States this is from Cullen Roche Prag cap annual inflation now this is the BPP the billion prices project for annual inflation that nobody should be arguing with online index and the CPI but both showing the shape of things um, it was up but now it is plunging down again uh, deflationary forces are taking over deflationary forces are taking over the next link from here is um, Colin Roche Prag cap has taken this from shadow stats to show the M3 M3 stopped in 2006 uh, John Williams has carried it carried it on and it was going up 15% really nice 2008 great plunge down and it's still only between 0 and 5 not nearly enough what this is showing is the Fed somehow can do more he said yesterday Bernanke I can do more but he doesn't want to go and do the unconventional more until the economy is absolutely shot at and everyone's pulling their hair out and demanding that he does more which somewhere along the line he's got to have to be getting unsterilized money out into the um, system 
at the moment all he's doing as openly as possible is in these conferences open you know the the talk afterwards is saying look the government has got to spend the money big huge spending money government's got to do it state and local are going to have to do it i'll buy the bonds if it looks like the market won't buy them and the rates are going up if the rates look like they're going up i'll buy them but you lot government state and local have got to do the spending first i can't spend the money just like that you've got to spend it and i'll back you that's what he's shouting and the politicians don't understand finish with china because they're not crashing well we don't know because the china figures are so hard to work out but you can see the shape of this these are these pmi you know projection things again the line is 50 anything below it is going negative anything above it is expanding so contracting purchasing managers index has been for a while you can see the trend the plunge down on the left is the 2008 9 to give you an idea of time so since 2009 stroke 10 it's been going down on um, PMI production and new business export all heading lower um, just to show that the world is in it's not crashing but it's just edging deflationarily down and the central banks and governments are going to have to get themselves together and decide what to do about it which really has to be the government spend the money and the central banks come in and buy the debt if no other bugger does that's it bye